Hey, what's going on, everyone? Tim here, and just wanted to tell you about our friends at Philly Esports. Philly Esports is a tournament organizer based out of the heart of Philadelphia that organizes pop-up style esport events. Each event, they provide opportunities for gamers to play in professionally ran tournaments for cash prizes and help build their personal competitive brand with professional photography and interviews with the players. They also have volunteer opportunities too. So if you're looking at making it in the industry, don't know where to start, volunteer is always the best way. So you can also do that with Philly Esports. As an organization, they empower competitive gamers to pursue their dreams in the industry of esports. Philly Esports' next event will be Saturday, October 26, 2019 at Drexel University in Philadelphia. To find out more about Philly Esports and sign up for their next events, visit phillyesports.net and make sure to go follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Philly Esports. Tell them TCR sent you. Jeff, what's up? Hey, this is Jeff from the Overwatch team. You're here listening to the Center Ring. Okay, so let's start. Hello and welcome. Welcome back to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Episode 178, coming to you live and or pre-recorded from an undisclosed location. The date, September 30th, 2019. The time, 8.16 p.m. Central Time. How's it going, everyone? If you're a new listener to TCR, don't worry, because this will be the best episode ever as we put a stamp on the 2019 Overwatch League season. We will recap the finals. We will tell our stories of Philadelphia as Anuj and myself were there, and we'll give our opinion on you know, what we're looking forward to for 2020, what we're not looking forward to with 2020 Overwatch League, things like that. Of course, we got E! News to end the show and Yikes of the Week, since this is the first episode. I guess it's also a day late. kind of forgot to tell people that we weren't doing an episode yesterday, but that's because we were in Philly, so I have a good excuse. Before I get too far ahead of myself, go ahead and follow us on Twitter, at The Center Ring, as you heard from Jeff. That is what you're listening to. Join our Discord. Our website, tcr.gg, has all the links for that as well. And let's introduce ourselves. Hello, my name is Tim. I will be your captain for this journey into esports. And alongside me, as always, is the ever joyful looking Anuj. What's, What's up? up, bud? How are you? I'm good. I what feel a like way I got to end a little the Overwatch the... year, right? I got a little bit of the travel sniffles, I feel like. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm happy to be home. Like, I am happy to be home. It feels like I've been gone for a long time. Well, you went for a wedding. So, like, I only flew out to Philly Wednesday. You flew out to Rhode Island, right? On yeah. Thursday? Yeah. So, you were, you were gone an extra day, but that extra day traveling can do it. And then the travel in between kind of got me too, you know, it was like traveling from one location to another. It just feels yeah. like I'm on a flight a lot. We'll, we'll get but into it too after we talk awesome. about the finals. Because it's like, we will talk about Philly and compare it to Dallas, which is where we both live. And although Dallas might be boring, it feels good to be home. It feels good to be home. And we're also dedicated enough to jump right on. I knew you just got home like two hours ago and we were like, no, we got to do this show. So that's what uh, that's what we're doing. Let's get into it's an the exciting show. We're we're like excited I'm... for the stuff we have to go over. We didn't want to wait for y'all either. You know, we wanted to to make sure we got this info out and shared our stories from the weekend. Oh uh, yeah, because it it was these are the fun weekends and the fun episodes for me because not only do we have esports to talk to, but I also feel like we can just kind of relax a little bit and just give our own life commentary of our travels. And I think listeners care about it. They might not care, but at least they they stick around and listen to it and maybe find it funny or the 
or whatnot. So we'll we'll get into Philly and, and it's how awesome of a city that is in a moment. But let's talk a little bit about the finals and our experience there because it was a short one. It was what we all feared it would be. It was a 4-0 sweep by the shock, and it was an ugly. And, and like, I don't even care that the shock won. Like, I really didn't have any dogs in the hunt. I didn't care. I thought Vancouver would have put up a better fight, but I really didn't care at the end of the day who won these finals. I just didn't want to be a 4-0 sweep. And yet, it was a 4-0 sweep. It wasn't even close. Vancouver barely put up a fight. The shock went to utterly dominate in the, the finals and walk away as champions of the second ever Overwatch League. Yeah, I mean, for in terms of the game itself, you're right. It was a beating. It was one-sided. Um, as you know, Sinatra called that out. He, he said this is what they were going to do, so at least he stuck to his word there. But yeah, I mean, Vancouver came in, and, and you could tell pretty early on. I mean, as we were watching it, you know, it didn't take more than a couple of points into the first match to realize you know, San Francisco was was there to play, and they, they looked very confident. Um, there was a reason, you know, a, after that Atlanta match that they did not drop a map after that. Um, you could see that at they all. regained their – At all. You know, regained their focus. And, I mean, in terms of watching a juggernaut, like, that was nice to see, right? Like, we did see a team that was really at the prime and peak of their game. Um, you couldn't have asked for a better I mean, performance honestly, like from it was, one team. It was somewhat like flawless play by them. It was. It was. And, and this was like... just alt dumps that Vancouver put on that you just... I mean, you can't you can't help it, right? Like, you're just yeah. going to lose some team fights. That's Overwatch. But like San Francisco completely controlled the pace of the game. You know, the fact that Sinatra, your league MVP, didn't play in two of these maps, right? He didn't play in Eichenwald or Gibraltar. They didn't even need him there. And then in Eichenwald, we see the crazy Bastion play that we came to find out in the post-game interviews. Like, that wasn't even planned. Like, yeah. like yes, they were supposed to put Bastion on the sh- chandelier at the third point, but he was supposed to be Maywald up there. Well, whatever, in the heat of the moment, the wall wasn't available. And so the shock just said, try it. Just use your alt and blast yourself up there. See if it works. It worked. And I think, I mean, A, you didn't see that ever. Like, no one has seen that. And I don't think the Titans were even expecting it because it just, they, they didn't know how to, th- there was no countering coming over from the Titans side. And you said it too, like, the shock, it was kind of funny because you even pointed it out there, like, when they did their walkouts, like, the shock were the ones who looked kind of deer in the headlights. Vancouver came out. They were dancing. They were doing like little in-game taunts and everything like that. So you even said like, oh God, this is going to be a slaughter by the Titans with how confident they looked. Like Vancouver came out looking so loose and so fresh just coming on the stage. I mean, they look like, you know, for the team that's the expansion team coming from contenders, they look like they had been there before on the big stage, right? And Shock came out and heads down and arms crossed, you know, really showing no emotion. And man, that changed once they got behind the the monitors there. I mean, once they were on the mouse and keyboards, it was a, it was a different story. And you mentioned too, uh, Vancouver being contenders and everything. This was really kind of the first time these guys have felt a defeat at this level. I don't know if a player really considers like stage losses and things like that, like that crushing. I mean, I know they miss out on money, but I I don't know what that does to your ego. But like this, like I mean, you're right. In the contenders, they won. They won uh, their last contenders, right? They went a full, like, two years, probably almost, on the calendar anyways, of not not really feeling like second place. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and and so the hype going into this, everyone was mentioning that this is the, the rivalry of Overwatch. I don't, th- I don't know if there's a big rivalry in Overwatch yet. Like, that's probably part of the issue with the league is that there's just not enough drama surrounding it. And I think this is part of the issue, right? Is like, you can't sell me on this is the most intense rivalry match and everything, and then there'd be a 4 0. Like, as soon as the 4 0 sweep happens, like, or even like very early on, like after that first map, the shock completely took that first point on the first map. Uh, what was it? Uh, on Lijing Tower. And it was like right there, you kind of got the vibe. Like, this isn't like a rivalry is supposed to be 
like the the teams are kind of evened up and everything. But I, I don't know. It's it's just like the uh, way San you know, Francisco did it. I I don't think that Vancouver is coming back next year with a vengeance. You know. I think it'll take multiple seasons with the franchising model to build these kinds of rivalries, right? Just like you more in the traditional sports side, like it's going to take time and, um, you know, playing in meeting head to head in playoffs or finals to kind of build that rivalry. It's a little different with some of the other esports that we cover where they can meet head to head in several championship matches throughout a calendar year. And, and it helps build a rivalry a little little quicker. Think Astralis Liquid, right? They met like five times in right. in finals, even though it wasn't the major finals. Like they met in very, you know, high highly competitive settings where there's a lot of money on the line. With the seasons the way they are, like really, I almost want to see it like, you know, next year, you know, should they meet in the playoffs and also be number one and two throughout the season? Okay, now you're starting to kind of build a storyline between them. But after just this one season two, because they weren't rivals in season one, there was no Vancouver Titans season right. one. Sinatra didn't play in season one. You know, you didn't have a lot of these For key figures there. Yeah, most of season, like what was it, three fords or something yeah, in season like, one like, wasn't there. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that'll take a little bit more time. Now, is it something to look forward to? Yeah, most definitely. Both these teams look like they're going to stay good should they keep their rosters together you know should the i don't even think either of these teams will be highly affected by major meta changes um just because of the depth that you see on both of these rosters well but, they, um, like they weren't affected throughout the year by them you know both of yeah. these teams were one and two throughout the entire season and that's like with let alone virtually meta like changes, three meta changes complete, yeah and then like and played in three four, variations of it format change right like yeah, the, yeah. even from when it was you know you could pick goats. any amount of heroes, right? Like with the goats meta, or now it's like the two 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 roll lock. It's like that didn't even affect them. So yeah, and I then you go you... two 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 roll lock plus sigma, you know, and it's like right. even that changed the approach to the game, and both of them have managed to stay. So I guess you just don't know what it's going to look like for twenty twenty. I know right now they're about to come out with a big patch that somewhat balances out the game it's going to be a remaster patch as well so you don't know i don't really don't know what that means i guess they're just going to optimize the game but you you don't know what's going to happen for for the 2020 season the game could look completely different um but as of right now you know even um andy miller the owner for the shock in their post-game press conference said it himself like they don't expect to make a whole lot of changes like he knows for a fact the majority of the players will be there next season. So we're we're most likely going to see the the core of the shock remain. You're going to see the core of the Titans remain. And uh you know, we'll we'll see. I guess you you don't know how the home stands are going to play out, but maybe you'll see a little bit more of a rivalry there. Um but who knows? Who knows? Either way, it was a good finals. It did suck that it was 4-0. The in stadium experience was pretty awesome. And I was there for New York last year. Um, sat in a different, I, 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 it's kind of unfair to, ju- to compare the two because for in New York, I was in the bowl, like in the middle of the stadium. So I kind of felt like the energy was a little different this year. We sat on the side, which I don't know. It, it, it didn't seem the crowd didn't seem as hyped to me compared to last year. Um, but maybe that's just me being a negative Nancy. We get in there. And the press area, they set up up in the press box. Not the greatest setup. Like, originally, we were going to be watching it on TVs. We went down on the floor and to watch Zed. Not that bad, actually. Yeah, yeah actually, pretty good. My yikes is... Um, you want to retract your Taking away. I'm retracting week. my yikes of the week from last week. We'll we'll pat push that on. But yeah, Zed was actually pretty damn good. It was actually like, pretty, he, pretty yeah. good. Pretty legit. Uh, and our buddy... Adam from Philly Esports, sponsor of the show for these last two episodes, text us or he called me and was like, yo, I can get you in this this suite. Just come up to the, the club level and and you know, let them know who you are. Which, I mean, first off, Adam, they know who we are. Okay. I don't have to tell anyone who we are. They know. Second off, so we're like, absolutely like, yeah, without a doubt, like, gee, watch this in not just any suite, but like the Comcast suite, like the owner's box is where we watch these finals from. Watch them in the owner's box with an open bar and a free buffet. 
or go watch them in a press box and watch it on a TV where you can't even see the stage. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the box. I'm not going to lie. That made the event for me. So like, I'm going to kind of piggyback on some of the things that you said here. I, I thought the environment was incredible. Um, I absolutely was hyped, you know, and there's somebody being an average Overwatch fan. Like I can openly say that, like, I'm not a big Overwatch junkie. I don't play it even as a casual game nowadays. Like I've kind of moved on from it. Um, but I'll still catch, you know, some of the competitive matches, but I just don't dive in the way the way you do. I thought the environment was awesome. I, I loved it. Um, the, the crowd, I thought, was hype when they really needed to be. I don't think Vancouver gave them much of a reason to stay hype throughout the match. Right. Um, you know, the, it kind of killed it off when it's 3-0 and you're going into your final map. Like, it's kind of hard to really, really stay hype unless Vancouver gives you a reason to do so, and they, and they didn't. So that's kind of on, on them. But oh. the venue, fantastic. The place was packed to the brim i mean there did not seem to be an empty seat in the house i know we were kind of waiting to to get some numbers but we're thinking it's easily over fifteen thousand. We're we we're there if not closer to the 20k yeah, they mark. said it was a sellout and like this was like the million dollar question for the year of like what was the capacity and it's like some people looked up the stadium seating capacity for that place um the wells fargo center i guess online said twenty one thousand for for concert seating i don't think there was twenty one thousand there but yeah but we do think it was like over 15 over you know, 15 like, somewhere yeah, between like, like i would say 15 to seventeen thousand is what i would which probably say is a hell of a number and i mean again i thought they the way they did the lighting effects they gave everybody there uh, a wristband to wear and with those wristbands, if you've been to, there's, there's a lot of concerts that do this. I've been to a couple that have done it. But as either the music changes or a play in the game is happening or they want to celebrate something, they can sync these lights on your wrist to, to kind of meet what's happening. In some cases, they did firework shows and random stuff. So I thought that was really neat and helped build the environment. But yeah, Adam was awesome. I mean, what a treat for us to get to go watch it. Um, you know, in the owner's box at, at that arena, it was it was really something else. The view from where we were compared to where we would have been was a hundred times better. Um, we got to meet a, a lot of interesting people, so that for me helped really make the event because the way we were about to be, I don't want to say treated because we did get in no, for no, free. No. Like, we were taken don't get me care wrong. of. Like, like I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, like I might have painted the picture that the press got you know screwed over no it was still very nice like the press area was still very nice it just where some of them had to sit was you an obstructed couldn't, you view couldn't see, i mean this isn't like being a like you straight up couldn't see the stage like there was the giant video board for the upper section blocking the stage and then that's where you would end up watching the match and it's like well i kind of want to see the environment you know like if i yeah, yeah. if i wanted to watch it on a screen i i could have just stayed home because streamed it from your mom's basement it would have been fun yeah like it's yeah like i assume oh yeah is it so uh, where we ended up being eventually um again you know thanks to adam there that was that was really something else that was made it a very neat experience um i mean it was just enjoyable we got some free swag out of it which was cool i know tim's a big lego guy so he got Got some overwatch um, legos got some overwatch legos and we got some we got some neat stuff and got a got a really good experience and um overall I, I came out really pleased with the event. As somebody that hasn't attended anything other than like a homestand, which again was a big event in my eyes. Right. Uh, for Overwatch here in Dallas. But th- this was I next mean, no, level. Say, say what you want about Blizzard, but they definitely know how to put on an event. Yeah. Like they yeah. definitely know how to to throw a solid event from start to finish. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. And I don't know if they ever said that. So this is also the downside of being at events is you don't get to listen to the commentary as much or see like what's going on in Twitter or anything. I don't know if anyone really ever brought up that like the screen inside the stadium was broken for the first map. Like there was like a quarter of the way down on the left hand side, just a giant black bar. Like some of the panels were out. Didn't really seem to affect the mood. Everyone still seemed to be pretty excited. It's not like it blocked the crosshair or anything. So it wasn't really blocking anything crucial. Uh, but man, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall. Like behind the scenes, what they thought of. 
because it worked all day. And then right when the match start, these panels black out. It's just like Zed was live right before this happened. And I mean, Zed had the whole screen in use. I mean, for, <laughs> it was working. Know, not a problem. It was working great. The and actual match starts. The, match the part starts, that you care about done. Not yeah, working. Out. And so, but yeah, again, like you said, it didn't, it didn't affect the mood um, that that was taken care of after map one. And uh, after that, I mean, there was, there was really the only other thing that I would say was questionable was how long these press conferences are. And I don't think this is a blizzard thing. This is just, I mean, it was just an, an, it felt to me an unusually long. Uh, it's, it's unusual press conferences coming from a guy who do, has done my fair share of press conferences and itch doing traditional sports for many years. They're normally, <laughs> it took us like almost two hours to get through both the winning and losing press conference. I mean, the winning one was definitely an hour long. Yeah. Just on its own. The losers had about maybe 20, 30 minutes with some lag time in between, but wow. It I mean, normally does not take that long. Also, I feel- you are limited to maybe two questions. There were some people in that room that like asked like four questions. And it's like, okay, guy, like you get one, you get maybe two. If it's a slow day, you definitely, you're getting greedy at three and four. You know, it's bad when you're getting repeat questions 45 minutes later. You're like, wait a minute. Somebody asked that at the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like, it's too, like, everyone feels like their question is a good question, right? And I'm sure I've fallen guilty of this. And then they ask the question, and you're like, bro, that's like the same exact question that the people, like, the three people in front of you asked, just with like a different twist. And then, yeah. like, so then the players are like, no, yeah, we, we uh, knew, that. like, they say the same thing, just with a different phrase. It's like, when we start um, asking about, that's media. Were you motivated because a streamer came and visited you before the match? We've gone too far. Right, right. But <laughs> everyone's looking for their soundbite. That's why, yeah. right? That's the issue yeah. with media is everyone has the angle. Like, they know what type of angle and story they want to take. So they're like, I just need this player to say something along the line. So you try to bait them to, to say what you want them to say. So that way you have their, their little snippet for your article or something. But it's whatever. It was whatever. But yeah, so that's kind of what our Sunday was like um, yesterday. Now, Anuj flew in Sunday. He almost wasn't here today. Would you like to tell the... Die. Well, you know what? So yeah, this is. Just, I'm just going to get it out. You There's just no got to... It's okay. This. You can be... This I is got, a safe place. I got food poisoning in Philly, unfortunately. Um, and now I don't know if I got it from... It, to kind of give you a recap of my weekend. Let me just... I'll go quick here. I went to my brother-in-law's wedding... We're in Providence, Rhode Island for four days, then came over to Philly to join Tim. So somewhere in between my brother-in-law's wedding and eating a Philly cheesesteak at Sonny's, which was fantastic, tasted great at the time. I so also don't know if it was them. The Tim ate it also. I'm not like saying it was them, but whatever happened in between Wednesday evening and that morning, I got a stomach bug. And it destroyed. It might have me. just been the Philly cheesesteak was like the the light to to the detonator. Like everything it just kind of yeah, fuse. it, it lit go. the fuse for sure. And once that fuse was lit, this was like, <laughs> I mean, this wasn't one grenade. This wasn't one bomb. We're talking about here, okay? This was like an air raid. This happened over a span of twelve hours. I was, I say twelve hours, twenty four hours. Yeah. I was in and out of the bathroom very uncomfortable um i was in and out of the bathroom at the hotel i was in and out of the bathroom no in the so arena. this is it like if, to get a proper turnaround time we ate we were in the the uber on the way back to the hotel and by the time we got back to the hotel a new you could see like he's starting to sweat he looks at me and he goes my stomach feels a little funny and it was <laughs> it was like oh man it just it was the first domino to fall you did the devil's work in a billionaire's bathroom in the comcast booth I so that's, did. that's a good power move that you can always if you ever run into the owner of comcast now you can always have that over him i'll mention it next time for sure for sure yeah uh, that that didn't stop. That didn't stop until I I got home, and it didn't stop then. <laughs> after it didn't. So this is funny too. So after the um the match, right? We're like, all right, we gotta go do the press conference. So we left the the suite. Anuj was like, 
I got to I got to go. I got to go. Text me where the press conference is at. I'll meet you. And I'm like, "Okay." And there's like a blizzard escort with us though. And he's like, "Well, do you want to wait for your buddy?" And I was like, and I was really I was trying to help you, Nuge. Like I was like, "No, no, no, no. He's good. He's good. Uh if you could just show me where it's at, I'll text him." And he was like, "Well, we'll wait for him a little bit." Like, "All right. 2 minutes, 3 minutes." Like six minutes goes by, and I'm like, "Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's okay. He he must just be, you know, he's probably washing up, <laughs> washing up, like taking a guy, shower." <laughs> and the guy was like, "All right, well, it's just down the elevator, blah blah. I'll wait for your friend." And I was like, "Oh, okay, all right." You should have taken him with you, dude. This is like I tried, I tried. You. He did this not is on want you to right leave here. behind. <laughs> so I went to the press conference, and like maybe like. Five minutes, ten minutes later, you walk down there and you were like, he came in looking for me. <laughs> so the blizzard esque you were you took he was so concerned about your whereabouts and your condition that he went into the bathroom to look for you. <laughs> gave like, it a little sneak peek, make sure I was okay. <laughs> you okay, buddy. I uh, gave the two thumbs up. I said, uh, I'll be out in a moment. Life is miserable right now. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even get it. Enjoy- I mean, the worst part of this whole thing is, again, as Tim mentioned, we were in a booth where it was open bar. They had a chef there making some lovely food for us and, you know, some more Philly cheesesteaks if we wanted them, desserts. I mean, you you name it, little, you know, think custom made bagel bites like a gamer's dream. I mean, they had all this stuff there. It's delicious. I I didn't get to eat any of it. I did not have a bite of one thing i couldn't even have water so not only this i'm I'm dehydrating myself and cannot (laughs) rehydrate myself because anything that goes in is coming out at this point and you were so afraid to even get up like you were sitting down and i was like you want to go go stand up and you were like i i seriously cannot stand up just moving the the only time you stood up is when you had to go and like meet and like talk to someone (laughs) because it's like like, mingle yeah yeah. we're like trying to network because there's so you know you get into a booth like this and and i mean and even then there's like yeah first of all you're trying to be polite there's like a bunch of nice people in there and you're just trying to like meet people and say hello but on top of that you're also trying to network and so i can't be there just shitting myself the whole time like i had to get up and make (laughs) some friends and so um I was able to do that, but not much more. I mean, the night that was, um, you know, once the event ended, we were asked to go out by several people to go get (laughs) drinks or go watch the Cowboys games or go do some more touring of the city. But it was like Adam waited like the entire hour and a half to two hours of the press conference just to go hang out with us. And I finally had to tell him, like, bro. Anuj has the runs. Like I kept trying to like tiptoe around it, and I was like, "Sorry, Anuj, there's no way around this. There, you just gotta embrace it. You gotta embrace Look, it." Adam deserved the truth at that point. He you really know, was, did. He really did. It's uh, he's, God he's bless him. Guy. But it was it was um it was tough. I wanted to go out with them. It would have been fun. Even even you know Kevin, our buddy there from ESPN, all ESPN Dallas was was there, and then all these guys wanted to go watch the game and do all this stuff, and, and that was just not happening. <laughs> uh that that was that was a no go. As Tim knows, I got it got home uh, back into the apartment or hotel and man. in even, bed and watched and the then Cowboys. And Kevin came over game. to the hotel room afterwards and like you are just the only thing you could see of a nude is his head. The rest is just curled up in like a fetal position in the blanket. <laughs> just like please God let me die. Just let me die. And he couldn't even give me that. He so he couldn't even give you the sweet gift of death. But we made it home. Uh, this this was, uh, you know, the flight was probably the scariest part. I was pretty nervous, but we did get onto that plane and, and you made it back. The two I did survive hours. the plane. I did. I did survive the plane. Didn't survive home, but I, you know, we, we survived the plane. So Good here times. we are. You're the only person to lose weight on a vacation. I came back three pounds skinnier, dude. That's incredible. Good Five days you. of eating. Five days of Good eating. Now, granted, we did walk a lot. Like, we toured every city pretty heavily that we yeah, went to. Yeah, but what but, you eat there is all junk man, food. And it's I very heavy. Very in heavy. Providence, food. they're like known for Italian food. And then you got to think like wedding food and desserts and cakes and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And it was like, yeah, no, I lost weight. I lost three pounds. So. so, somewhere along the line, you made a dumb decision and ate something bad. And as our listeners know, you don't make dumb decisions. You make smart decisions like signing up for Thrive Fantasy and use the code TCR at sign up and you will get $10 free 
for your first $10 deposit. So it's a $10 match. You will end the day with $20. You're already $10 up. It's a daily fantasy sports app that you use prop bets. They actually had one this weekend for uh, New York for CSGO. So if you were a part of that, you were probably a millionaire just like me because I made the right decision and used Thrive for my betting app. Again, use TCR during sign up and they will match your first $10 uh, Thrive Fantasy. So there you go. Let's get into real quick. We'll get into Philly, but before we do that, let's get to our yikes of the week, shall we? We shall. I have two, so let me get one out of the way. Everything was looking really good for Modern Warfare until like this last week when it was leaked out that they were going to have loot boxes. Okay, whatever. Loot boxes, who cares? You know, if people want to buy them, more power to you. It's probably just cosmetics. Not a big deal, right? Why do I care if your gun is, is purple? No. It's also been leaked that in these loot boxes, right now anyways, are guns. Like real weapons that you get? Yes, like real weapons that you can use in the game. Like the whole point of Call of Duty was like to progress and unlock the attachments and guns. And now they've implemented this, what is essentially pay to win in their loot boxes. And that that is a yikes from me. Not like, and again, I guess this is just on the casual side because... On the pro ladder, they'll probably have everything unlocked anyways. And if you're playing customs, everything is unlocked. But let's be real. The majority of the players on Modern Warfare are not playing those game modes. And now, you know, it, I was already always behind the curve anyways, just because I don't have much as much time to play. But now I'm even going to be worse because I'm not buying loot boxes and I'm not playing as much. Yeah, that that's, um, that's definitely a big yikes. I mean, again, no problems with skins, you know, I wouldn't even be happy if this was attachments, to be honest with you. Like, I don't like the thought of unlocking anything that's a progression unlock should not be in a loot box. So um, that's that's a big yikes. I, I do believe they're going to hear this community feedback and change that before they launch. Because right now the game has a pretty good vibe going around it. Um, people felt good coming out of the beta. There, there was a lot of excitement, regardless of how we felt. Because I think we were also kind of like... We like it, but we also want to see what this is like for COD competitive. Um, I do think there is a lot of positive hype going around it. So if if they're willing to like kill it with something like this, I would be rather shocked. I think you can right. look at games like uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. I mean, there, there, there's a lot, right? There's a lot of games out there that really messed up the way they've done loot boxes. So th- this is an opportunity. You know, Anthem comes to mind. Th- this is an opportunity for them to hopefully fix that they got about 25 days before launch and hopefully they're able to do that yeah yeah we'll see we'll see i mean it's not the first time that a company has made a bad decision with loot boxes and then they fixed it or whatnot beforehand so we will see what happens what is your yikes of the week man this is like a big yikes for me here like this is uh related to twitchcon so twitchcon was going on the same weekend um, for those of you that attended, I, I hope you got to see your favorite streamer from about 50 feet away behind a line. But God. for me, the yikes would be at the TwitchCon party. Uh, they were obviously giving out alcohol, which is fine. Not, not a problem with that. It's the way they were serving the alcohol. They basically had a beer pong looking table here with glasses filled up, pre-filled with beer on them, all different kinds of beer in Think your plastic cups, right? Like your red plastic cups or whatever clear plastic cups for them, just sitting on the table for you to go and grab. Why is this a yikes, you might ask? Well, let's think about this. You have a bunch of 18 to 30 year old individuals at a party, e guys, e girls, sexual tension, I'm sure, amongst <laughs> different people. Like that's kind of the age category. And you're going to have alcohol with no sort of bartender kind of keeping tabs on what's getting put into drinks. Now, that's a big yikes. I mean, that, that's a bad look. I, you know, I hope everybody came out okay from it. I'm, I'm assuming everybody did, right? I mean, everyone right? did. Like, everyone did. Or they don't remember if something happened. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's right. just a bad look. You got, you got to be in, in this day and age, you got to be more cautious. I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, I don't trust anybody. So, with the I'm way the world just say is Twitch now, TwitchCon like, in general is a big yikes for me. Yeah, that's fair. 
I mean, that I was mean, definitely really, we talked just, about this. It's just a weekend where Twitch can get together and just kind of st- stroke themselves off and being like, good job, guys. Good. We, we did great this year. We did great. And then just everyone kind of pats himself on the backs and say, good job. And then and then like they just kind of wave to their their fans as they leave the place. There you go. Phil says right here in, in Twitch chat, saw someone got roofied on Twitter, but I don't know if it was at the Twitch party. 100% at the Twitch party. Well, 100% assume that was it. Yeah, there, there's no reason <laughs> to believe it was anything else. Again, I saw that picture. Somebody had posted it, and, and the first thing that came to mind is, yep, well, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> like, we are going to have an issue this weekend. And so, um, yeah, that definitely my... Uh, my yikes and and that could be um a yikes turning into a lawsuit depending on what happened my other yikes of the week comes from and of course we can't go a yikes of the week without bringing up overwatch the toronto defiant announced their own supporters club the defiance so the defiant announced their club the defiance which kind of looks like a pigeon version of the atlanta rain logo i don't really understand how it got that far in product development and no one said guys this looks like a pigeon but with the atlanta rain uh but nonetheless that's what they settled on the reason this is a yikes for multiple reasons a toronto already has a supporters club it's the toronto alpha flight toronto af as you might see them on twitter ran by our good buddy rich that's already been established as like the supporters club for toronto esports the defiant knew about them they just refused to work with them Like, they wanted it all in-house, which nothing says desperation and lame as a team creating their own supporters club. Like, that is like throwing your own surprise party. You just don't do it. Yeah. Especially, you know what? They In my mind, they were one of the few cities that was lucky enough to have the right person running their supporters club, right? There's not, like many people out there better than Richard to, to do what he was doing for them. And he, uh, he had experience. All in. I mean, he did it with five deadly venoms for New York. Yep. And that was the largest one at the time. I mean, they were like huge. You knew about them from other markets as like, it just as we did. So I, I thought they were incredibly lucky to have Richard, you know, in, in their market doing that for him. So this is a big slap in the face. I, I would love to actually speak to Richard about this. Richard, if you're listening, we'd love to kind of hear your take on this also at some point. Um, I know they got, I mean, you look at the Twitter announcement and it, all the comments were bringing up Toronto AF. Like all of them were saying like, nope, why are we, we already have a club, don't need you. And then, so Toronto Defiant kind of came back and said, no, 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 no. This isn't a supporters club. This is a supporters club association. Whatever the hell that means. I mean, yeah, bad look for sure. Like the, the, the point is, is that you already had a group of people doing this out of the love of Toronto esports and you decided to take it upon yourself to try it yourself. And it just kind of backfired, kind of backfired yeah. deservingly so. So that is my big yikes of the week as well. Uh, moving on though from that, if you have any yikes of the week, let us know on our Discord or Twitter. We would love to give them a shout out. Uh, we do yikes of the week uh, every Monday, so every Monday episode, but this week Tuesday, because we flew back in from Philly, is yikes of the week. So let us know. Speaking of Philly, real quick, your review on the city. Loved it. I mean, it was. It you was, were there for only okay. one day. I was there for one day. I'll tell you. What, okay. The good, the bad, and the ugly. For me, the good was every corner was a historical piece of American history. And I thought that was beautiful. Like, you could really, like, we walked out of our hotel. We went three blocks down. Boom. What do you know? This is where Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Walked another two blocks down. Wow, this is where George Washington's first presidential home was. Oh, hey, by the way, right next to it is the Liberty Bell, the first U.S. Supreme Court, Ben Franklin's home. I mean, you, you name it. Ben Franklin's it was, grave. I just, Ben Franklin's bridge. Ben as our Franklin. as our Uber driver Toilet. is going 100 miles an hour down downtown roads, avoiding every living soul in his way. Boom, there's Sam Madison's house. Like, it's just the amount of history that's in Philadelphia I mean, I knew I knew it was historical, but I didn't know it was like all right there. You know, like it's kind of nuts thinking about at least as an American, 
how much of our beginnings happened right there. Yeah, it was it was really neat for that reason alone. I'm going to assume you meant James Madison. You said Sam Madison before we get blasted by. Oh, sorry. Some of our, Sam our Madison listeners. was a guy I used to work with at the ticket. He's so also shout like out. A, Shout old American uh, played for the Dolphins as well. So at least he's somebody famous. I definitely um, was not talking about <laughs> Sam Madison, former Miami Dolphins. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, like again, it was uh, gorgeous from that retrospect. Like there was there was just so much to see, so much I wasn't able to see. Um, Did you see that I, the I, bathrooms there were actually in the same location as the outhouses that like George Washington used? Is that leg- is that real? Yeah, no. There's a it, on the bathroom. It's locked up. I guess they're they're redoing them. But on the public bathroom there, it said, like, you never know where history is found. And there's a plaque saying this was the original location of the bathrooms. That's pretty awesome. It's yeah, about I mean, the only again, spot in Philly you didn't use. I am somebody who in, enjoys my history. I mean, everywhere we travel, part of the experience for us is diving into the city's history, whether that was when we went, went to Italy. That was a big part of our trip was was seeing all the history there. Um, and, and same thing, you know, when we've, we've done it with South Carolina and places along the East Coast, you, you get an opportunity to experience some American history that you don't get here in Texas or that you don't find on the West Coast. And so yeah. um, to see something in U.S. history from the 1700s really, I mean, it really, really means something for us. I know all of our hey. European listeners are like 1700s. That was like <laughs> yesterday, bro. Like, what do you mean 1700s? Um, you know, for us, that that is... Um, Really something special. So Also, another thing lo- I learned about of it. Philly is that they love Ben Franklin. He is oh, yeah. all over the place. If you are a listener in Philadelphia, like you need to explain what... I mean, I get he is Ben Franklin, but damn, I've never seen a city love a man more than Ben Franklin in Philadelphia. Like, if you don't know the name of something, just throw Ben Franklin in front of it. Like, Anuj, uh, what, what was that? That what was that one place we we ate at? It had like the French fries. Ah, uh, Benny's, Ben Franklin's. Oh, that, that's it. And it's like, what, what was that really tall? That tall building, it, it was had a certain name. The, the the Franklin Building. Oh, that that's it. Like we, I was walking around and I saw an advertisement for a Hershey chocolate, like the you know just a chocolate bar, and it was Ben Franklin eating a Hershey's chocolate bar, and I was just thinking like. You know, like they're sitting there in their marketing campaign or their meeting room thinking, all right, we got to advertise in Philly. What can we do? And then like, like the intern you know, from the back of the room, yells know, out. right? Like some intern was like, I got an idea, boss. Why don't we hear me out? Ben Franklin eating a Hershey's bar. It's like, damn it, Jimmy, you're hired. Intern to CEO. <laughs> right. Like <laughs> just like that. Like, yeah, no, it's just but it was, it was everywhere. It was neat. Like, it's just, um, you know, you, Tim and I, I got to walk down Ben Franklin's passageway that he walked every day to and from work to his home. Um, you know, things like that are just, you know, unique experiences. And, and, and that made the city beautiful in itself to me. Yeah. The, there, now, there was other parts of it that I did not enjoy as much. Um, we've been to other large cities. I thought... Like there's a large number of homeless folks in Philly. Now they they were not hostile. They didn't do anything to make you, um, you know, feel overly uncomfortable. Obviously, you know, you you wish there was something you could do to help out. But there were like a a lot, and they were everywhere. It wasn't like one. You know, generally when you go to some of these bigger cities, they kind of have those areas, and you kind of see that in Dallas, right? Yeah. Like you can go to 35 parts of 35 and Stemmons over there. Like you can. You, you know, like, hey, this is kind of where the homeless people gather. You know, this is their part of town. They need to have, you know, you can't like, you're not getting rid of them. You know, you got to find a spot for them. But that's kind of their location. Philly, I kind of found it throughout the city. I mean, it was outside your hotel room. You know, and each stop you went down, there was four to five kind of at, at several corners. And so, um, you know, that part, along with, I don't know what the proper way to word this was. <laughs> it is, um, and I'm going to tread lightly here. When we were walking home from the event, there was like, I'm going to say the word gang and take it for whatever you will. Gang, group, association, affiliation, team, guild, a posse. clan, posse, whatever you want to call them. 
literally riding up and down sidewalks on dirt bikes and ATVs, popping wheelies. Right next to cops, not giving Right next to cops. You don't get that. Nobody. And and maybe this is normal, but in Dallas, you do not get that. Like, that was very foreign to us Dallas boys. In Dallas, you're getting arrested the moment you try some some hot stuff like that. You know, like, that would not... That would not fly here, especially if I mean, if a cop saw you. I mean, heaven forbid a cop saw you in Dallas doing that, you you would be pulled over relatively quick. You'd probably get um, pulled over just for driving an ATV on the road. They'd probably be like, well, "What are is, you doing?" That is also true. So yeah, like, and, and they were going outside of our hotel room during the whole Cowboys game. I mean, we could hear them for about All three, night. four hours straight, just, back um, and just forth. going up and down the street, back and, so, and forth. Not really doing anything productive, just going back and forth. Stuff like that. I was like, "All right." Like clean this crap up a little bit. Like th- this feels a little off here. Um, but overall, the city was great. I know Tim had a very controversial tweet out there that lit up the internet. I think it was number two trending on Twitter that this is why Philly is amazing and Dallas is boring. And I don't, I want to say, I, I kind of, we talked about this and I differ in that. It's, I agree in one sense and I differ in another sense. In terms of, history and just pure sightseeing yes dallas does not have nearly i mean it's not even a tenth of the amount of things to just go we have where jfk was shot yeah you you can go look at where your president's head was blown off like that's not something we like to celebrate around here but hey that that's what we're kind of known for right um and and then there are other things obviously to see in dallas people will say dallas but it's not really dallas like going to fort worth or arlington or whatever you know so you're 30, 45 minutes away. Um, so yes, in that retrospect, yes, Dallas is nowhere near the type of town Philly is when it comes to history and in just in terms of sightseeing. I, I think Dallas brings its other unique, fun aspects. I think we're a great food city. Uh, and you know, I think we have great nightlife in terms of our, our city. I think there's, you know, you can enjoy nightlife not only in Dallas, but you can do that in Arlington or you can do that in Fort Worth. Um, so I think we bring other areas there but yes like i do agree in terms of like just being able to get around and you have a a group of people coming into town and you're like hey here's a list of 10 things you need to go do i would have trouble getting past three or four right and especially like in a reasonable thing like in philly we never touched a car other than the fact that we were short on time so we had to uber back to the hotel but we could have easily have walked back to the hotel gone down a different road and see some other historical thing so, I mean, when we were walking to the Liberty Bell, we just happened to run across where Thomas Jefferson signed the Declaration. Like we are not signed, uh, wrote like, the Declaration. Like I knew it was there, but like you would not have known. Yeah, we were just like walking. You're like, oh, hey, by the way, this is where that one dude, what's his name, TJ or something, wrote this Teach. thing up. You know, uh, number two or whatever we want to call him. And so that that was really fascinating and. Um, I, w- I would like to go back just to kind of feel like I, I didn't feel like I finished up my tour. You know, right. I, w- I wasn't done. And so, yeah, I mean, um, two thumbs up in terms of, of the city as a whole. Right. Yep. I know. I had a lot of fun. It was a good way to kind of put to rest the, uh, the Overwatch League. They really pick good cities. I'm kind of curious to see where next year finals will be. I don't think they can put it in the East Coast. I don't even think it can be in America again. Just to for being a glo- quote unquote global league for to to do three years in the states, I think would be a little risky. Just from like, what's more risky to you, doing it back in the states and just changing the time zone, right, going central or, or west, or taking this to China? What's more risky? I don't think. Or I say China. I, mean, I, I say China. Say China. Either Korea, one of those, wherever, or China right? or Korea. Yeah. Um, Asia, let's just say as right. a whole. I mean, I, I think London would be risky. Like, I think Europe would be risky just because from what I've spoken with media members from London and Paris over the weekend, like esports just isn't big. They they aren't big over there. Um, but I think between like the TI and League of Legends and things like that, like China and Korea, like we've seen that they can represent. And especially when you think like, 70% of the league are Koreans anyway. You know, like Vancouver Titans probably almost have a bigger fan base in Korea than the actual Seoul Dynasty do just because Vancouver played there recently, right? Like Runaway, yeah. you know, the the former team of Vancouver Titans 
were there. Like that we said, they were the the golden boys of of the contenders or the Korean side of it. So I don't know. I I think it would be safe. I think the safe bet, like if they just did it in Vancouver, right? That would be their. See, we went international. It's it's international, and it's really just Vancouver. I you know if I if I were just a betting man, or I'm, I'm going to throw out my best guess here. I just think we have. I think we go West Coast next year. I, I think they just flip coast, keep it in the U.S., keep it a little closer, probably to Blizzard headquarters over there right. also, and and um can maybe use that as hey we wanted to bring it home kind of thing i I, you know whether it's good or bad um i see them just flipping coast keeping a u.s and then seeing where overwatch is year four if they want to try korea or something right um what other things that are you looking forward to 2020 then obviously we have homestand and i think both of us are looking forward to that that's definitely the biggest thing like so i i don't think we're gonna see teams next year with records like 20 and 2 I don't think you're going to see that. I don't think that's going to be possible unless you, I mean, if you do, it's going to mean a lot more, I should say. Uh, I think, I think playing in home and home um, type environments is, is awesome. I think that's going to be huge for esports because them along with call of duty, doing that hand in hand is really going to be something special. It's something just, we haven't seen before. So I think, with me, I'm I'm really optimistic that this is going to be a good thing for esports, and and I hope that it works because if it does, it could just really open up some floodgates for for other esports to at least consider or new esports to to take this route, right? And if they break through the scene, but yeah, that that's that's really big for me. And then I'm also I'm always just curious about what Overwatch is going to do with the meta. You know, I want to see how does this game change and evolve within a year. What are they going to take out of season two? You know, there was a lot of negative feedback that they got throughout the season when it came to the GOATS meta, but it's not like flipping over to a 2 2 2 all of a sudden made life great. So I want to know what they're going to do for, for season three that um, hopefully finds some balance. And I, I would like to see consistency in how they do it. Whatever you do, do it at the beginning of the season, do it midway through You're the right. season. And then you wait till the next year to do any other major changes at that point. But Bl- Blizzard is um, unique in that way where they just don't care what you think. They're going to do what they, they want to do. Right. Like they need a roadmap, but they don't ever have one. Like they need a roadmap yeah. to say like, okay, throughout the season, we're going to do uh, a balance update here based off of whatever we feel needs to happen. Then we're going to do another balance update here based off of what we feel needs to happen. But they just, they're like, eh, you know, it would have made sense to switch to 222 during, you know, the mid-season break where, we, like, teams had, like, a month to get back to normal. And everybody or, had six months of complaining about it leading up <laughs> right. to it. So it's like... Or we could do it for stage four. So it was very... Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, they're, they're just going to do their own thing, um, which I guess, you know, more power to you, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to, or I hope that with home and home or home and aways, teams become, they get a little bit more personality. Like I know teams have alternate jerseys, but I really wish Blizzard would just let them design their own like standard home and away jerseys, much like we have in traditional sports, right? Like I just think every team having cookie cutter merch is, is boring to me. That's very, uh, that's very minor league in my opinion like i think every team should have their own style their own design right so let them kind of embrace their their own cities a little bit so i hope that happens for 2020 with home games starting uh much like you said for balance i know this new patch coming out a lot of people are saying that like it wasn't making enough of a difference but i think that's what you need right i i don't think every patch that comes out i think people have miskewed that it needs to be obliterate one hero's usefulness right like just you know uh doomfist is being overplayed patch him out of the game it's like nah i think it should just be balanced in the sense of if you are a team that works well with doomfist you can find a way to make him work right now the league is so cookie cutter i don't think it will ever be that way right because as soon as they see san francisco doing something and it works regardless if the team thinks they can do it you know, damned if they do, damned if they don't, 
Florida Mayhem are still going to try to run a Doomfist comp, even though it's like they should just be running a dive comp because that's what complements them or whatever, right? Yeah. But So I would hope to see a little bit more just balance across the board, which then would allow teams to run their own style with heroes. Uh, but, But it's also difficult because, you know, Blizzard uses one patch for both client side and the professional side. So what 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 they might patch because of a pro team is doing well on our, you know, pub servers, it it's completely different, right? So who knows? One thing we saw with the shock was in these last few rounds here, even just in the playoffs, is the way they switched out the number of players they were using you know, in between matches where really you kind of see one static lineup and they right. they finish off a series. I'm kind of curious to see how many teams can, can adopt that. Obviously, teams don't have the type of depth that they do, but they were literally taking out their best DPS player right, and finding a way to dominate because they knew it was best for that particular map choice. And so I'm curious to see if other coaches kind of have the cojones to try that same thing. You know, a lot of people don't want to, you don't want to take out your best player, even if you know, hey, he is not best suited for this map because you don't want to hurt right. feelings or it's a bad look if you lose. But um, well, I mean, look at the fuel, right? The fuel did the exact opposite where they were on a 12 game losing streak and they were still like, nope, we're sticking with our guys. We're sticking with our He is in yeah. there. He started the season. He's our starter. And it's like, we're not saying to take yeah you're absolutely right like just because you are taken out for a map or for a weekend doesn't mean you're not the starter it just means that your skills are better used elsewhere right like it can, doesn't mean you're not a star either you out. whether you're a starter star like it doesn't mean it doesn't take away anything from you it's just it's a team game they give you 10 or whatever players for you know 12 players for a reason on a roster and um, we saw that utilized by the best team in the world. So um, whether you're the fuel or you're anybody else, it's, it's something that you need to consider. And if your coaches aren't considering it, it's, it's probably time you consider another coach, to be honest, because San Francisco is doing it with three coaches and all of them are feeling the same way that, hey, this is something we should be doing. So, right. And that was another um, thing in the press conference that I was surprised to hear is that how much credit the players and the ownership gave the coaching staff. Like for yeah. San Francisco, every question went back to like we just have the best coaches, and you like you never really think about it in esports that the coaches really make that big of a difference, right? Like you just kind of think they're there, and maybe they'll like sh- hey we need to have them because we need to have them type thing. Maybe yeah, they can and give maybe us they'll something. share a fun fact somewhere down the line with their teams and stuff. But like they really were like no like you know credit goes to the coaches and GM. So I was I was kind of impressed to see that. What we just saw with Shock and what you see with like somebody like Zonic and CS, um, the importance of coaches is there, you know. And and now we're now we're like really seeing it across all esports and um give credit where it's due. You know, the, those three guys were able to work together as a unit, as three coaches on one team and um experiment in ways that we haven't seen in, in Overwatch. So again, excited to see how that carries over into 2020, not only with their lineup, but how other teams adapt and hopefully um, kind of use that same philosophy. And again, I mean, we, we talk about the fuel a lot on here because that's our, our hometown team, but they, I think this is an approach that they not just need to look at, they need to do. Right. Exactly. And you know what we need to do, Anuch? We need to do E-News. Who's a sponsor by today? Uh, your food poisoning. Thank you, Sunny's. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by Sunny's Philly Cheesesteaks, who gave a nuge food po- allegedly. Allegedly, gave a nuge food poisoning. Allegedly, I was fine. I took it like a champ, which maybe just speaks more for the rotten waste dump that my stomach is. Mm. That. <laughs> Something that knocks you out of commission. I'm like, oh, feeling pretty good. <laughs> Feel the best I've ever felt. <laughs> <laughs> feeling, feeling pretty good. Uh, <laughs> in E! News, CSGO, we're going to talk about this on Wednesday. Uh, so you'll hear it Thursday. But uh, ESL New York, Evil Geniuses beat Astralis 3-1 in the finals. Evil Genius, a.k.a. former NRG, 
what a weekend they had as they won the Gears tournament that went on and the Fortnite event that happened. I saw them tweet that out. And then when you think about it, I mean, really, props to Evil Genius, the org, but I'm sure NRG was just as proud of them. Like, you know, like they were a week away from still being NRG. So pretty impressive there. Uh, what a way to get back into CS. You think they're happy with that investment? Oh my gosh. I mean, for Evil Geniuses to come back in after seven plus or seven, I mean, I don't know how long. I think it was about seven Five years. plus years of not being active I in I read this somewhere scene. seven years. For them to come in and, and come in with the bang, um, they, re they really made a statement today. And if I am, uh, and we'll get into this, like I said, next week, but if I'm a Complexity or 100 Thieves. Well, not or, next week, next episode. Or ne next episode, or if I'm a TSM, I'm really looking at myself on what did I just miss out on here. Right. Yeah, I would love to know like what the details there were, you know? Yeah. And there's some other cool stuff that, you know, this I don't know how much we'll get into next week. But the new cache was the new um, new iteration of the map cache in CSGO was unveiled at uh, ESL One New York. It was played as a, so a show match with professional players, right? And they unveiled it. Looks gorgeous. It looks so good. Um, I'm not sure if it was you or one of our buddies, Donut, that like truly, truly hates that map every time we play it. It's Donut. Know, it. Our buddy Donut yeah, I, despises that map. It, to I'm me, it's like, actually one of my favorite maps. I'm so excited to to jump back into some CSGO when this map releases. I, I hope it's soon. It looks beautiful. I mean, just uh, some of the new wall banks and, and the open sky boxes to, to change the ability the way you use utility, which is such a big part of CS now, um, is, is really, really fascinating. But they've done a, a beautiful job. The, the map looks great. You know, props to Volcano, props to FM Pwn, or... FM Pony, FM Pony, however you pronounce his name. Um, amazing job by those two guys. They, they put together um, a, another map that, that's going to be in the rotation. You're going to see it as one of the primary ones. I'm curious to see what gets taken out, but um, a really good showing Just to take the out map. Vertigo. And, and don't please. rework it. Just take it out. I have a feeling we're going to see like a cache or something come, or a mirage or something come out, but we will, we'll see again, good looking map. It's supposed to be released early October. So we'll get our hands on that. We'll, we'll stream some gameplay of that for y'all to check out. If you, uh, if you don't play it. Also, uh, border in the chat asked at the beginning of the show, if we were going to do any ECS streams, we are going to do them. Um, I have to look up cause I think they do have some like guidelines. They want people who are streaming their matches to go from, so I just don't want to step on anyone's toes. Plus, we just flew back in today, so we're both pretty exhausted. But we will stream some ECS matches on our Twitch, so be sure to do that. Twitch.tv slash The Center Ring. Uh, we'll, we'll do some uh, TCR theater with those here uh, shortly, maybe even later this week. We'll look at the schedule, see what's happening, what we can work in. Uh, in COD, a Tatch was confirmed for the New York team, so that's two confirmations for them right now right yeah two confirmations two former phase players i know attach also went and played for evil geniuses for a large part of last year but um it, it attached widely known for his connections to phase and his time with them the, those two guys together and teaming up is, is actually quite exciting and both of them being on the new york roster seems very fitting so um they're they're building something out there and then i think like looney is also confirmed with them possibly and maybe even lamar i'm not sure I mean, I, you know i think we kind of know the rosters and we'll have to get back to this in a, in a future episode and we yeah. will so don't worry but well um, you, you attaches too, uh, at least micro fell tweeted out today too that they have officially registered the name for the the, the dallas team as well so like, i think they're... it's empire you dallas do. empire this is going to so? be the name, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was leaked out, and you can even go look up DallasEmpire.gg, and it, you can see who it's registered under, and it's registered under Team Envious' organization. Okay, well, there and you so, go. Dallas Empire. Yeah, I didn't know if I should spoil that now because it's not 100% confirmed. Oh, no, 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 go for it. I'm just, but, I'm, I'm thinking if I like it. Dallas Empire. That almost seems more fitting for New York, personally. Yeah. Um, like, I think of Empire State of Mind or Empire Statue state, or whatever, state, you know. Empire State Building, not Empire yeah, Statue. Yeah, the State Building. Oh, Empire State Building, yeah, Empire State Building. Sorry, and then the Empire State of Mind, like you know, it, it, it's a, a yeah, very attached to New like that York. For Dallas. In That's but, not, like I, I thought New York when I heard it too. It should be like Dallas something, but not Dallas. You know what though? Like I'm, I'm happy to like Dallas 
rangers or, or something Re just super yeah, generic. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. We don't need... It doesn't have to always be like cowboys or something, but... The Dallas Oilers or something, yeah. some nonsense like that, you know? So, oh, whatever. I mean, the, make some cool merch and I'll be happy, okay, Mike? I don't care what you name it. <laughs> That's Give really me some true, cool yeah. looking merch cool, I don't really and I'll be happy with it. Dallas um, Tycoons. That would have been cool. But that does, that kind of sounds like a minor league team. It does. It does. But like oil tycoons. I don't know. In other we'll, news, we'll talk to we Mike about some... it. We'll get with Mike. We don't worry. We'll, we'll Hopefully we have Mike. him on the show soon. Uh, uh, Battle Royale news. We got Apex Legends Season 3. Um, Tim, how long have we talked about this for? What is the one thing we've asked of Apex Legends really since the first month the game released? That New was... chick characters with less clothing tim is no longer being asked questions today it was a new map we wanted to see a new map and we're finally getting an additional map we've, we've been talking about this on battleground games for a long time to push out multiple maps and give it some sort of map pool and diversity that way um but they have a new map in play it looks like it'll be kind of like some sort of lava, lava. fiery kind of map that they're doing along with a new character um that starts october 1st so that'll be out right around the corner here um, for everybody to dive into but i think that's big like i mean the game needs a, a little bit of a jump start again and i think a new map will really help bring the player a, a good portion of the player base back now they'll have to be active and, and continuing to do stuff yeah, I'm out. People will leave again quickly but I'm out. but i am excited to try a new map because apex for me at least was my favorite br game out of, out of the grouping of br games I, i'm, I really I'm do. done with br games i'm just gonna come out and say it I'm done with them. I've uninstalled all of them from my computer. I've replaced what BR time I normally did with, I put Counter Strike back in the rotation. Overwatch. What Tim, any you uninstalled Apex Legends as well? Uh, I believe so. That hurts a little bit. I believe so. I'll get, I'll reinstall it to play once with you on the new map, and then I'm gonna uninstall it again. What if you love the new map? It doesn't matter. Totally I don't like BRs. So. New one tomorrow, new character, Crypto. He's uh, supposed to be some hacking kind of guy. We'll see what he actually does. But yeah, um, new map coming out tomorrow for for Apex Legends. And in other news, DreamHack announces a two, two $250,000 Fortnite tournaments. They will be at DreamHack Winter and Anaheim. And all BYOC ticket holders can participate if you choose to. Pretty crazy I, dallas they did do a full byoc tournament for fortnite but i don't think it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. no i think it was one of those things like you see for cs and all that where it's right. like hey like you could just can sign, sign up, up and do it but and this is like a legit tournament yeah i think because i think even this pros and all that will be competing in like they'll right. actually have real players coming down and playing at these events where at dallas like hey if you lived in dallas and maybe you were a pro also you would show up and do it but you weren't flying in necessarily to go play in it um th this is going to be a legit i mean 250 you're talking about some of the larger csgo tournaments at this prize pool and so <laughs> forth but and now buioc um, has it yeah so this will be a solo tournament there's a yikes again, of the week for you csgo really, you have a byoc a tournament outpricing you guys again dreamhack winner and dreamhack anaheim so stay tuned Excellent, excellent. All right, so that will do it for this episode of The Center Ring. Shout out to Philly. Thank you for being an awesome city. Shout out to Blizzard. Thank you for being an awesome host. Uh, again, I know we missed, I, I, we had to have missed some of the details and things that we loved about the weekend, but truly do know that we loved every second of it. It was a blast. We had a ton of fun. Can't wait to go next year. Uh, to the Overwatch League Finals. We'll be at BlizzCon, so that will be another... I didn't even mention that we got, I got to meet Jeff. So, obviously you heard it in the intro, but I got to meet Jeff. That was awesome. So maybe I'll talk more about that. More than once. Yes, more than once. We bumped into him, and he remembered me. So, we're That's pretty right. much best friends. And once again, thank you to Adam for making the event even better than it would have been. So we really appreciate yes. you uh, taking Adam care of us from... in Philly Esports. Philly Esports, so go check them out at Philly Esports. We will be back in a couple of days with the short week here, uh, talking Counter Strike, 
recapping a little bit of uh, ESL One New York, talking about uh, how we all got to just get along with esports, Counter Strike, Overwatch. I'm talking to you guys. We're all friends here. We all just like video games. Calm down. So we'll talk about that though on uh, Thursday's episode. But until then, I'm Tim for Nuge. We'll see ya. And one more time, we really do want to thank our friends over at Philly Esports. They definitely made our weekend in Philly that much better. And in case you don't know, Philly Esports is a tournament organizer based out of the heart of Philadelphia that organizes pop-up style events. Each event, they provide opportunities for gamers to play in professional ran tournaments for cash prizes and help build their personal competitive brand with professional photography and interviews. As an organization, they empower competitive gamers to pursue their dreams in the industry of esports. Philly Esports' next event will be Saturday, October 26. You got plenty of time to register. That will be at Drexel University in Philadelphia. To register for that and just to follow everything going on in your local area for Philly Esports, go check them out, phillyesports.net, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Philly Esports.